Hey guys, are you here? And today is the day before 7.2. If you guys haven't seen already, here are the 7.2 PvP patch notes. Very exciting stuff here. Um, so let's jump right into it. Player versus player. Here it is. No pigtails today, by the way. Anyway, um, first change the honor requirement for leveling through the honor system has been reduced so you can prestige quicker. In addition, um, for the first prestige, prestige zero, um, the honor required to advance from one to 50 has been cut in half. So that's pretty awesome. Um, or been reduced by 50%. Uh, the conversion of honor to XP has been increased by 50% so you can level up quicker, I guess, through PvP, which I guess is pretty cool. Um, right at the start of the expansion, actually, they way overtuned it. So PvP was actually like the quickest way to level, and then it got nerfed shortly after. But then it was nerfed too much, so now they're trying to buff it up again. Um, just a little backstory. Um, artifacts now grant a minimum stamina increase to all players. The minimum is equivalent to the purchase of 36 points. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Um... The 20% expertise granted to all players in PvP will no longer be counted against 100% parry or dodge abilities. That's actually interesting. So you'll no longer be able to hit through evasion or die by the sword ever. Okay. <clears throat> Here is um, a pretty cool change. There's something called the Obliterum Forge that we're getting. Basically what you can do is normal season gear. It can be disenchanted through the Obliterum Forge to create Echoes of Battle. Echoes of Battle can be used to buy gear from vendors. So if you get a piece of gear you don't want, you can disenchant it using this forge to get Echoes of Battle to buy new pieces of gear that you do want. So pretty cool. Same exact process with Elite Gear, except it um, gives you a material called Echoes of Domination. So through Echoes of Battle, through Echoes of Domination, you can easily create um, normal gear or Elite Gear of your choosing using these vendors. Pretty cool. Um, in arenas, a surrender option has been added, so people can surrender. I'm not sure exactly how this works, but that's pretty awesome, because right now, if you didn't know, if you leave a game before you lose, you don't actually get the reward from it as if you, you know, even if you stay till the end but lose, you'll get a little bit of a reward. You don't get that if you leave, but if you surrender, I think you still do. Very cool, very interesting. Um, <clears throat> so it's nice that that surrender option is there. Here we go, jumping into the meat of it. There's not as many changes as I thought. There's not that many changes, guys, but let's go through them anyway. Demon Hunter, uh, the duration of Nemesis is reduced to 15 um, seconds of PvP. Here's Nemesis, it's just um, a damage increase um, by 25% for one minute, but it's only going to work for 15 seconds. This is actually a huge, huge nerf for Havoc Demon Hunters here. In addition, the damage of Chaos Strike and Annihilation is reduced by 15%. So, some pretty big Demon Hunter nerfs. We'll see after all the, you know, stats change and stats scaling and stuff like that um, is in play, how this is going to affect Demon Hunters. Hopefully, they're not completely terrible. Um, right now, they're pretty decent, so hopefully this doesn't make them complete trash. Um, Vengeance is the tanking spec, no longer deals 10% reduced damage. I hope the tanking spec is an OP. That would be... A, a tragedy. I, I hope Vengeance is still a newbie spec, and I hope it stays that way forever, because tanks shouldn't be allowed in PvP, guys. Um, here's uh, some Boomkin changes. If you guys aren't active on ladder right now, Boomkins are like the number one most OP thing ever. Um, just the AoE pressure that they can put out is insane, and a lot of it comes from Moonfire, Sunfire, and Starfall. Look at this. Moonfire, Sunfire, and Starfall now deals 50% less periodic damage to player targets. Wow, 50% nerf, that's huge. Half of your damage is gone. Um, that's crazy. Enemies can now see the radius of Starfall while active. That means the little circle in the ground with Starfall, you can tell when you're in it and when you're out of it. That's awesome because with Starfall in the past, the Boomkin would put it down and you didn't know, am I in it? Or am I not in it? You know, can I avoid this damage or can't I? So now you can actually tell, which is cool. So this change and this change are going to make Boomkin's AoE pressure a lot less. So nerfs. Interestingly enough, Solar Wrath now deals 40% more damage to player targets. Shooting Stars grants 2. Astral Power on player targets was 4. I guess that's a slight nerf. Dying Stars restores 3. Astral Power was 8. Slight nerf. And Intellect increased by 15%. <clears throat> so we got some nerfs and we got some buffs some aoe target nerfs some single target buffs we will see 
how this plays out. Are Boomkins going to be less of a AoE rot play style, more of a burst play style? Like in, in Watt, are they going to be more single target burst now? I don't know. Does that mean Mage Moonkin's coming back? Pog Champ? I don't know. Hopefully, that would be cool. Play with Asbury again. But here it is. Not sure what's what's uh, happening of it yet, but those are the Boomkin changes. Feral, Bloodletter's frailty increases damage you deal to the target by 15% of PvP. Okay. Uh, Restoration, Wild Growth cast by Overgrowth now applies um, only to the initial target. So I think what that means is when you Overgrowth, Wild Growth only gets applied to that one person instead of everyone. Um, Hunter, Diamond Ice no longer prevents the use of Ice Block and Divine Shield. This was so annoying. So Hunter's Undispellable Trap, you couldn't Ice Block it. And I've tried to do this in the past, and I can't, and it sucks. So now you can Ice Block it and Divine Shield it, which is freaking awesome. Getting into the good stuff. The mage changes. Um, Arcane and Frost. Arcane, intellect reduced by 5%. As you guys know, I, this season I think I am safe rank 1 on my Frost Mage and my Arcane Mage. It sucks that Arcane and Frost are both getting nerfed when Fire is still the best spec. <clears throat> Excuse me. Still a little bit sick. Trying to get over it. Anyway, um, Fire is, in my opinion, the, still the strongest spec. Either Fire Mage Sub Rogue, Fire Mage Warrior. Very, very, very good comps. Fire Mage Feral is even really good. And they nerf Arcane and Frost. Blazer, why? Why, 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 why? Okay, jumping into it. Intellect reduced by 5%. Arcane did do a lot of damage. It's getting um, a Mark of Alunith buff, a buff in the general patch notes. So I could maybe see an Intellect nerf. And with the scaling, maybe with the scaling um, of, of better gear and better stats, maybe this nerf was needed. It's hard to tell, but it still makes me sad. Frost, on the other hand. Um... There is a talent in your artifact tree that's going to make um, Blizzard instant cast when you have Orb active. And Blizzard reduces the cooldown of Orb. So you're going to be getting a lot more Orbs this next patch. So maybe this is their type of, their kind of way to say like, okay, we don't want you getting too many Orbs and just one-shotting everything, so let's nerf Orb. Maybe they're preemptively nerfing this so it's not too OP. We'll see. I'm still a little sad though, because I'm a Frost Mage by heart. And I dabble in the arcane from time to time just for fun. And I never play fire. And fire is still the best one. Man, feels bad. Brewmaster no longer deals 10% reduced damage. They're giving the tank treatment across the board, it looks like. Feels bad, man. Hopefully, Brewmasters aren't good. <laughs> uh, Mistweaver Monks. So this is interesting. So, Mistweaver Monks, the only reason they're not really good right now, or one of the reasons they're not really good right now, is that their mana just goes oom instantly unless they're playing the um, the fist weaver spec right and here mana cost of ama ancient mistweaver arts reduced by 25 percent so it's a huge deal that means they're not gonna they're gonna be able to play the good healing spec and not go oom in addition mana regeneration increased by five percent <clears throat> and they renamed fortifying electro to fortifying brew good old blizzard renaming things sure anyway the good healing spec makes you oom instantly. The bad healing spec right now, you can heal forever, but your heals aren't that good. Now, you can play the good the good healing spec and not go oom? We'll see. This might make Mistweavers stupidly strong. I don't know yet. I'm excited though, because I like playing with Mistweavers. I really do. Um, Lawbringer no longer damages targets that are under the effects of crowd control abilities that break on damage. Whatever that means. Shadow Priest. Hopping into this, intellect um, increase by 5%. That is a buff. Now, Edge of Insanity now provides a 20% damage increase while you're at 100 Insanity and not in Void form. That is a nerf. So, it used to be 30%. So, this is a 10% nerf on the Edge of Insanity build that most Shadow Priests are running, especially when you're running Shadow Priest Boomkin. So... Buffs, nerfs, we'll have to see. Are you still going to go into Void Form with Edge of Insanity? Are you going to have a new playstyle? I don't know. We'll see kind of how this all shifts. Edge of Insanity now activates above 65 Insanity when talented on the Legacy of the Void. So this might mean you still play Edge of Insanity and Legacy of the Void. You're shifting in and out, but when you're at full Insanity and in Void Form, you're completely owning. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how this actually works. And Siphine can no longer be targeted using macros. That should have always been there. Warrior Mass Spell Reflect now provides 30% magic cult damage reduction. Okay. I guess that's fine. Um, PvP 
template increase for UA warlocks. UA warlocks are stupidly weak right now. So the the um, intellect increase is good. I think they're a little squishy too. So this might not solve all of their problems because they're still a little squishy. They die. Same thing with De Destro. They die really easily. Demo is super tanky. But look, the damage of Doom is reduced by 15%. And intellect from affliction is increased by 5%. So maybe this will offset it enough to get rid of those stupid Demo Warlocks and get some more affliction Warlocks into PvP play. I would like to see that at least. And Fell Fisher was reduced to 6 seconds and almost 15 seconds. That's that little green stuff on the ground that leaves that Mortal Strike effect. So here are all the changes, guys. Went over all of them. I'm excited for 7.2. Let me know if you guys are excited for 7.2 in the comments. Are these good changes? Are they bad changes? I don't know. I think most of them are good. I'm a little sad about this, but that's okay because I'm a mage and I'm a little biased. But anyway, let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Thumbs the video up if you liked it. Thumbs it down if you didn't. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace!